Anuary's third Thursday seminar. My name is David Stevens, also known as Laser Dave, and we have a brand new exciting seminar to show you today. Um, this one is titled Outdoor Recreation. We're going to cover all types of materials, products, applications associated to this market. Um, if you have any questions, just like if you've ever joined one of my seminars in the past, please post them when that question arises. Um, and then we will get to them at the end of the seminar to which we will ask or answer them live. Simple questions may be answered uh, digitally on screen, so keep an eye on that. And then uh, more complex questions myself. And then I have my special guest, Andy Wellens, which is our industrial sales manager to join me to help answer any type of questions that you may have during this seminar. So let's go ahead and go to my screen and get started on our brand new seminar for January's third Thursday uh, titled Outdoor Recreation. So this seminar is brand new. Um, it entitles all different types of materials, applications, processes, wavelengths, types of lasers, specifically for doing outdoor type rec recreation type uh, applications. Um, just like before, if you've ever followed any of my seminars, this seminar is utilizes QR codes. If you're not familiar with QR codes, all you need to do is turn your camera app on your phone, uh, point the camera at the QR code, but do not take a photo, and a web link will show up on your screen. Select that link for quick and easy access to web links, files, and videos. We are also a very social company. If you want to keep, uh, keep up with current events, trainings, products, applications, and laser materials, please scan the QR code and subscribe to your favorite social media platform. We are on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and Twitter. So today's seminar is on outdoor recreation. This is kind of a market that it has encompasses a ton of different applications and materials. But this is an extremely profitable market, especially in this day and age. People are looking for maybe different avenues to look at for your laser system. So we're going to kind of cover a little bit of everything. And I've broken this into types of lasers used for different applications. And then we're going to touch on um, some key common applications that are typically done in this marketplace. Um, there are so many. I, pick, I picked ones that tend to do very well, um, but there's no specific one that works better than the other uh, with, it, with the exception of a few. So we're going to cover some hunting, shooting, fishing, boating, camping, uh, auto, RV, clothing, gift items within this seminar. Um, the outline of today is going to include some success stories in this marketplace. Um, then we're going to go into some applications on just standard flatbed CO2 laser systems, including some duck calls, firearm cases, canteens, photo engraving, um, flatbed fiber laser to kind of go into that metal marking type application, carabiners, gun parts, compasses, anything that is actually metal in, in substrate where a fiber, fiber or flatbed fiber laser may be beneficial. Um, Moving on to a Trotec flex machine, a flex machine, a dual source, of course, which would give us the ability to do multiple materials with multiple wavelengths, um, including like knives etching on the blade with a fiber laser and the handle with a CO2 laser at the same time. So we're going to cover different applications kind of associated to that type of machine. And then finally, we're going to finish with the Galvo lasers, which are going to be able to do your full length firearms, the, the depth marking into metals um, and stuff like that. And I'm going to try to cover explanations on exactly how these types of applications work with each of the different lasers and, of course, how to do them with each of the different laser. And then finally, at the very end, I will bring Andy Wellens on and he and I will answer any of the questions that you may have do throughout this course. Here is a video. That My name is Steve. Started. I'm with uh, 2 A Tactical LLC in Arizona. I'm Jeremy. I'm the owner of Dark Alliance Firearms. We're located here in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. I I'm primarily a customizer. I guess you could call me a tattoo artist for firearms. Basically, we take whatever the customer's vision is or if they have even just a couple little things like 
you know, if I want some as a family heirloom, well, we get a couple details from them and we fashion their gun into something that they can hang on the wall or hand down for years. Honestly, the most lucrative is definitely the de the decorative, the, you know, the things where people are taking what's important to them, uh, coming up with an idea and saying, hey, I want this on, you know, my handgun or my rifle. I have a uh, fiber laser. It's a 30 watt speed marker FL. So this time I decided to go with the Trotec speed marker 150 watt version before I had the 30 watt and now I just upped it to the 50. When I first started, I was looking at like what kind of laser, what equipment to use and very early on, I decided CNC wasn't the way to go for me. The CNC just doesn't give me the detail that I wanted to get. We started finding that, like, oh, well, custom guns, like, we can send stuff off. Well, I would send something off and get it back. I'm like, why am I paying for this? I could do the same thing. I was trying to get uh, laser companies that um, were around me to go ahead and work to work. It's hard for them to see the, your own vision. It's, it's basically asking another artist to see your artwork the way you see it through your own eyes. And that's really not the most easy thing to do. The only thing I've ever used is Trotec. And it's a good decision because I have a bunch of buddies that have bought other stuff, you know, and, and they're having all kinds of issues. And I kind of like, oh, get what you pay for, dude. For me, I want the best. So I will spend the time and the money. I will work for what I want to get the best quality so that I can put out the best quality. And that's why I want to throw that. I'm a firm believer in if something works, stay with it. If, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Keep going. All right. Well, there you go. That is a great example that kind of show, showcases some of the unique and spectacular type engraving applications that are being done utilizing Trotec Galvo fiber lasers, which we will cover at the end of this course. Um, it also gets you kind of exciting on what is possible with laser systems, what can be done. There are so many possible applications, so many possible things that can be done to become profitable, like, like they have determined the decorative aspect, but it can be manufacturing, it can be decorative, it can be labeling, it could be, uh, you know, barcoding, it could be logos. There's really no limit that what is possible. And so we're going to kind of go through now some of the different types of systems and what applications that are the most useful within a specific application. Again, there are so many, I kind of picked and choose what, what kind of was a, a good idea based on my experience, um, but you can think outside the box and really kind of maybe extrapolate from what I'm going to teach you today onto other types of materials or products. So we're gonna start with the standard Trotec Speedy Series. The Trotec Speedy Series is designed with one goal to make it make you more profitable, boost productivity, um, improve product quality and value, um, broad range of processing capa uh, capabilities allow for you to meet a wide range of customer needs and reach new markets. Um, you have expert direct manufacturer support and the systems come in systems ranging from 12 by 24 all the way up to 24 by 40 in our Speedy series. This is our most popular line, our most diverse line, our fastest laser systems that we currently manufacture on the flatbed side, and they are going to give you diversity to handle whatever can be thrown at you, especially in this marketplace. So the first one I'm gonna cover is just standard CO2 lasers. CO2 lasers are um, common, commonly used with woods, plastics, acrylics, glass, fabric, MDF, and much more. Basically, um, most combustible materials. If the material is combustible, the laser can typically cut it as well as engrave it. Um, Non-combustible materials like your glass and stone and even some into metals, there are ways to still mark it, but with, not without, without depth. So, a CO2 laser is the most diverse laser when it comes to the broad, broad range of materials, markets, and applications that can be touched by. Um, and also is going to cost you less money than going to say CO2 and fiber, um, but it does limit you in some cases. And so I'm going to showcase what's possible with just a CO2, and then we're going to go into CO2 with a fiber, um, and then just to the like the fiber galvos as well. So you can see the entire range of possibilities. CO2 typically has a larger working area. Um, less focal tolerance, um, robust motion systems, multiple configurations. Um, we can also do lots of different accessories as well as upgrades to them. So if you want additional capabilities, cutting tables, rotaries, different lenses, there are a lot of different options available for you. 
The CO2 has the ability to do typical laser engraving where it vaporizes the uh, surface of the material, leaving an actual depth or a cone, uh, cone shaped indention into the materials. Engraving can work on combustible surfaces. So if you think of materials like woods and plastics, we can actually, they are a combustible material. So therefore the laser will actually etch into them producing depth into that material. Um, cutting, uh, again, material has to be com combustible in order to cut the laser, especially with a CO2 laser. You apply enough power to vaporize the material and cut all the way through that material. Not all materials are cuttable, so it is something you need to understand what is possible, but most combustible materials can be cut with a CO2 laser. Um, surface marking is just the uh, process of marking. And this is what we would do on something like a painted metal or anodized aluminum, where it vaporiz vaporizes a cover layer or a surface layer producing contrast, but it does not produce any depth. Um, fusing is the process of actually uh, applying additional materials, or ceramic powders and like Surmark uh, laser bond Thermark compounds onto the surface of materials. So this is how you could actually do a metal mark with a CO2 laser without the need of a fiber laser. It is does require an additional compound, which is the co uh, compounds like the Surmark material. However, if you're just doing a, a decorative type mark, uh, this is something that is possible on materials like metals. The first application I'm going to cover today is probably the most popular when it comes to CO2 marking. CO2 marking, um, believe it or not, I actually developed this process uh, like 18 years ago working for another laser company. In the past, checkering and grit patterns were all done with CNC machines. Um, it was expensive, it was time consuming, the equipment was far more expensive, um, and you were limited to very specific patterns. The other option that was done in this process was done by hand, which was tedious, time consuming, and extremely difficult, requiring master engravers by hand to do this type of grip patterns and, and decorative type marking and engraving into the surface of materials. Well, laser industry completely revolutionized this marketplace by utilizing a high wattage laser to actually vaporize the surface of the woods and composites and materials to provide grip patterns into these types of firearms 10 times faster than a CNC machine at one tenth the cost of overall cost with a 10 times less failure rate. So it was a no brainer once this industry got started and back in about 2002, 2003, when I developed it, um, it revolutionized the industry. And now if you're doing decorative type grip patterns onto gun stocks, knife handles, fishing rods, sword handles, duck calls, baseball bats, whatever, anything you need a grip pattern on, the laser is ideal for this application. Um, I recommend a higher wattage. Low wattages will work on this, but you are it will dramatically affect time. Um, 80 watts plus is recommended for a decent productivity. You do need a feature called relief mode or a 3D engraving mode. What this is, is the ability of the laser to engrave depth when it sees dark and less power when it sees lights and in every variation of power in between. So the laser will actually engrave deep when it sees dark and, and, and no power when it sees white and, and, and vary the power as it sees each shade of grayscale. Relief mode is what allows this feature of three-dimensional type engraving to work. This type of application, unlike like decorative 3D type graphics and stuff like that, is extremely profitable. Um, standard two-inch lens for best results. It's gonna give you the crisp, clear, sharp image that you're seeing on these uh, graphics here. Some gun stocks and stuff tend to have a lot of curvature. Um, I would suggest going up to a 2.5 inch lens for that. Um, and then I have also had success with even a four inch lens because there's not too much detail with these type of grip patterns. Um, and a four inch will work and allow you a lot more deviation of focus as like gun stocks and stuff that tend to be not flat. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually show you the process of how to do this from start to finish. Um, instead of just saying, hey, this is, this is a cool feature and this is how to do it, um, that's not my game. My game is to show you exactly how to do it. So what I'm gonna do is the most common software in our industry is CorelDRAW. So I'm gonna show you the process of actually generating the graphic from CorelDRAW all the way through finished results on how to engrave it. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start by de designing a shape. 
The most common would be a uh, diamond shape. Uh, neuro grip patterns typically would be a diamond shape, but this process will work with realistically any shape. Um, I've even done like I, like you saw in some of the samples before, like logos and um, circles and squares. But the way this works is the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw just a black outlined, um, in this case, of a diamond. And then we're going to go into effects. And then we're going to click on contour. And we're going to do a contouring effect with this diamond to the center. So we'll click on to center. We're going to set our offset to 0 0.001. And we're going to change our fill and outline to white. And then once we hit apply, it's going to contour from black to white. And the nice thing is now you can hit apply on any shape or any black outline, and it will do the same contouring on a circle, a square, whatever. Now I only have one. I need to hit control plus D, um, and then I'll make sure the snap is turned on, and I'm going to snap the next one. When control D is a duplicate, it'll duplicate your graphic. And, I'll, and once I do it once, it will then duplicate that offset, repeating it. And so I can do a row. And I would do a long enough row to fill up uh, an area, and you'll see what I mean by here. Then I'm gonna group the row and I'm gonna duplicate that row, snapping it to the next row. Then I'm gonna select both of those, select a corner, and then again, snap it to the next one. And then I'll hit Control D over and over and over again until I fill up an array. So this is an array of the diamonds that we have created. And that's what we want. Now, because each one of these have like a thousand lines in them, the best way to do this without slowing your computer down is to convert it to a bitmap. I will then convert my array to a bitmap and you need to make it large enough to fill in your other objects, which you'll see in a minute. So this array needs to be pretty large to fill in your object. Then we'll take an outline. So in this case, it's a gun stock outline and I'm gonna go right click on the outline, and hit frame type, and then create a uh, um, power clip. Uh, power clip. And then that power clip, I can take my bitmap and I can just drag it into that power clip and it will drop my checker pattern or diamond pattern directly into that. And then you stick it in the laser and engrave it. And then we're able to do that. Now I can extract that, that, and then I can move it to a different gun stock in this case, and I can send that to the laser and I can engrave that one. So that's how simple it is. Um, now to do it a little more complex here, I've got another power clip with a little more complex graphic a much larger array that I create here. I'm gonna drag this into it. You have to combine all the objects that you want the power clip to be together. So I'll combine them together and then I'll drop my uh, image into the, into the outline here. And then I'm gonna show you this one all the way through to finished engraving, uh, including the, the, the job control and software. So now I'm gonna select that object. I'm gonna hit print. Then I'm going to go into the properties of the laser system. I'm gonna select the material that I'm going to engrave, or you can manually put in your power settings, power and your speed. You need enough power and enough speed to, uh, to give you a nice depth. And I'm gonna turn my process mode called relief on. I like to run at a thousand DPI. Um, takes a little longer, but you get a much sharper, crisper look, but it does take longer, like I say. This works just fine at 500 as well. Um, but uh, you, you may do a small test on a piece of stock material before you do this to see what you like best. Then we'll go ahead and send our graphic to the laser. We'll push start. Um, I, in this case, I had a lot of deviation on the gun stock. I am using just a standard two inch lens, which is able to handle this much deviation. Um, and then I focused kind of in between high point and the low point. So I found the highest point and I found the lowest point of the graphic um, and I kind of averaged my focus. Because there's no text or graphics on this one um, that are too much detail, I'm able to uh, get away with that. Um, and the, the laser lens, a two inch lens, this is about the max I've been able to do with a two inch um, without going to a two and a half. Then just a simple brush, a little water. Um, I do recommend after you wipe the water off to take a little uh, gun oil and then oil down into the engraving. Um, this will kind of protect the, the pores of the wood. And then you have your finished result. Intricate, detailed engraving grip pattern. Uh, decorative, it's going to immediately enhance the value of your product or material that you're processing this on. I'm um, trying to do this. The overall time that it took to do this on my 120 watt laser was about six minutes to engrave this graphic, um, which is about an inch, uh, inch and a half tall uh, by about seven inches long. So it wasn't huge in size, but it really did uh, enhance this graphic of this gun stock. 
Now you can do this with all different types of stuff. So here's an example of some different patterns that I've created, same process. If you draw a circle and you fill it the same way I just showed you with the diamond, um, array it together, convert it to a bitmap, and then power clip that graphic into different shapes and sizes, you get all different types of shapes and types of graphic. You can combine it with imagery, logos, uh, putting a logo into the grip. Other types of patterns and 3D patterns can also be done to produce some very stunning finished results. And these are just some example grips on say a pistol grip. Uh, but like I say, I've done this on knife handles. I've done this on sword handles. I've even done this 360 degrees around um, like a, a baseball bat in the past. And so you have a nice grip pattern. Usually you don't wanna do too much grip on something like a baseball bat because it can tear the hands up, but uh, you, can, you can very subtly do this same process. Um, the fish scale pattern is a little bit different uh, because it gra it's a gradient in one direction. Um, there is a little bit different process for that I did not cover, but all the rest of these uses the same process I just covered in the previous video. Okay, moving on to another popular application for the laser systems are the CDEC marine grade foam pads. These are outstanding. Um, I came across them about a year ago. Um, I purchased this one just on standard Amazon. They're typically used, CDEC foam is used in boats, it's used in RVs. It's a very durable, high density, high dense urethane type, like outdoor UV uh, capable foam um, that's used in like boats and RVs and all the types of stuff like that. It is waterproof, it is UV stable, but it also engraves beautifully. Um, high wattage again, in order to really kind of get that contrast, uh, but ultimately any wattage will work with this just in a matter of time. I do recommend a vacuum table or a cutting grid with vacuum on it, um, or you need to tape this material down because it likes to kind of not lay flat because it is a, a, a flexible foam. Most of these pads tend to have an adhesive back on them. So once they are um, uh, purchased, they can then be peeled and then stuck down so they stay down permanently. This one is actually designed for a Yeti cooler. Um, it fits perfect into the different types of Yeti coolers and you can buy these just on Amazon. Um, vacuum table, two inch lens for best results. Um, and then what I do to get the contrast to come out is I engrave it. So here we go, I'm gonna go ahead and engrave it. Um, I'm engraving it at 250 DPI. You don't need a lot of resolution for something like this. Um, high power, um, it definitely. And then of course the speed, depending on the contrast you want. And then to really make the image pop, after I'm done engraving it, I do a vector outline around the graphic. So after it's done raster engraving, I have a blue outline around all my vector art and the laser literally does an, a little outline around each one. Um, and when you see the finished final photograph here, you'll see what I mean, really pops when you look at it straight on. You can kind of see that the laser put a, put a little groove around the outside of it and really makes it pop out. It's a great material to work with. Um, put it onto your cooler um, and then now you have a very interesting conversation piece. Um, it's, just a, it's just a neat application. And the nice thing about this, this can be used for signage, any type of outdoor application, um, simple small logos or large graphics and engravings like you see here. Um, the next one is uh, polyurethane foam. Um, polyurethane foam, unlike the CDEC foam, is more of your softer foam, similar type material, open celled construction, allowing the absorption of water, air, and gases. Um, this is a flammable material, but it is extremely awesome material for cutting with the laser. Um, you do get a little bit of an angle as you're cutting thicker materials. You can see over here on the upper right hand corner here, you can kind of see there's a bit of an angle um, as you cut out thicker materials. Um, wattage will depend on uh, will depend on how thick you can cut. I mean, I've cut up to six inches thick with 120 watts on this, but my angle and quality starts to go down. Um, and also you run a risk of fires for the thicker material because this material is very flammable. You wanna keep a close eye on it. Um, but up to like two and three inches with like an 80 watt uh, is, is very doable. 120 watt, you know, typically on the higher ones. Um, downdraft vacuum cutting table, definitely want a cutting table for this. Air assist, if you're cutting really thick stuff, I would suggest replacing your air compressor or air assist with a nitrogen gas, which should eliminate or reduce the chance of any flare up uh, if you're doing this a lot. Two inch lens for up to an inch thick material is fine. Um, two and a half inch lens for an inch and a half thick foam four inch lens for three inch and over. So if you're basically going through the thicker, you will see a little bit of an angle on the cut. 
Um, I do focus into the material approximately 60 thousandths of an inch on an inch. Um, I will go up to about a quarter of an inch focused into it on an inch and a half. And then as I go up to like three inches, I'm focused into it upwards of a half of an inch. Um, and you can get away with this. Focusing into it will actually get your cut angle a little straighter, um, but it will never be perfectly parallel like a hot knife, for example. So here's a QR code in the middle here. If you want to scan this, it'll take you to McMaster Car, which is where I buy the foam. You can buy it with an adhesive back, pretty much any thickness you want. Um, and there's uh, it, pretty much any industrial type supplier house will carry this type of foam. It has to be the open cell polyurethane foam to work best. The closed cell foams like uh, styrofoam will typically melt and you have more of a chance of fire. Um, you can cut those types of other foams, but those foams can be di more difficult to do, more melting, more difficult. And uh, I do suggest trying other foams. Open cell is uh, always going to be better when it comes to laser cutting. So here we go. I'm going to take that foam and I'm going to show you how we what we would use this for in this marketplace. Um, it is commonly used for, you know, gun cases, displays and toolboxes. So the best way I have found to create this type of an application is a simple flatbed scanner. Um, you can pick up a flatbed scanner anywhere. And, and then what a scanner does for you is instead of taking like a photograph or the requirement of measuring something, it allows you to, to do a scan of an object. And that the reason I like a scan is because it's perfectly parallel and it's an exact one-to-one -one ratio. So after you have scanned it in, you can take that graphic and then you can go into your drawing program, bring that photo in knowing it's the exact same image and you have to literally trace around the graphic. There's no quick and easy way to do this, unfortunately. Um, I use the Bezier tool in CorelDRAW. Um, it allows you to basically just click and each time you click, it's gonna give you a straight line. Uh, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Uh, foam is pretty forgiving. You don't really see any of these little major uh, like corners and stuff like that. Um, and you can smooth them out if you'd like. This little gun right here, it's a little, just a little BB gun, just as an example, um, took me about 40 seconds to outline. But once it's done, you now have the file. Um, and especially if you're doing this uh, on, on a, your toolbox or something like that, or if you're selling this process, uh, what, once the outlines are complete, you are now can build a library or an outline library, and then you can just arrange the graphics any way you need to. So that's it. Like I said, it took about 40 seconds. That was time lapse about twice as fast as, uh, as I actually did it. It was a 2x time lapse. So it was running a little bit faster. But now I have the outline. And what do I do with that outline? I position it into my graphic with any other outlines that I have created to then create the graphic. So I'm going to take this gun um, with a little side on it. Uh, it's another little BB gun. Um, and I'm going to create an outline. And I'm going to do two different colors on it as well. And so foam is not only cuttable, it's engravable. And the nice thing about that is I can engrave with different colors. I can assign different laser powers. I also put a vector outline on it to sharpen it. Um, and so in this case, I got a little Allen key um, and I'm engraving it at one power setting. And so I don't go very deep. So I don't want the little Allen key to fall all the way in. Um, and then I've got the little clip, which is much deeper. I engrave that at much higher power so that it fits into that place. And then once you pull it out of the laser system, you get a beautiful laser cut foam, stick it into the case in this case. Um, and then, and then of course you can then slide your graphic directly into it, giving you that that presentation look, protective type case for your object or your firearm or whatever the object or product that you're actually producing. So that you've gone from a basically an outline of a graphic to a cutout uh, or an engraving and a cutout. Um, and then you can actually store your product, your firearm, your knives, your guns, your tools, whatever it is that you're processing with this app for this application. It is a beautiful application for the laser. There's really no application or no type of process that works better for this type of application than a laser. So it is uniquely suited for this market. So we're gonna go now uh, also with the CO2 lasers, a few of the accessories. Uh, one that's common within this industry is of course our rotary fixture. Um, I've done like butt ends of uh, gun stocks, like the shotgun four ends and stuff like that. You need a rotary to do that. And so rotary is an extremely popular application or accessory attachment for your uh, CO2 laser system or your fiber flatbed laser system for doing some of the types of applications. Um, the nice thing about the Trotec rotary is that it's tiltable. Um, you can get it with rollers. 
You can uh, it, it extendable. Um, you can adjust the height and the adjustments with it. Um, and you can exchange the cones to rollers. Um, you can tilt the graphic up if you've got angle on your gun stock or on your duck call or whatever it is that you're actually running or your Yeti cups or your, um, I'm going to show you here in a minute, or we're going to process a canteen with it. Um, but it does allow for all those conical type stuff. You can also affix a three jaw chuck onto it as well. So you can do cones, you can do rollers, you can do a three jaw chuck, or a lot of people will do custom type stuff. Um, if the cones are not right, uh, I have a laser hack on our YouTube channel for using funnels to extend the, the, the diameter of your cone. So you may check out our YouTube channel if you want to see that. Lots of different ways to extend the capabilities of a rotary so that you can actually process that. So we're going to show you how to use the rotary now with a, a large canteen. So this is a, a canteen that I'm etching into the surface of it. It's a vacuum insulated, much, very, very large. This is uh, like, I believe it holds a gallon of water so that you can kind of give an idea of size. It's done with a the rotary assess, uh, machine. Uh, laser wattage will determine your time. Pretty much any wattage will work with this application, but um, to give you an idea, an 80 watt, I'm only able to run about 50 or 60% speed at full power. Um, higher wattages are gonna be able to process this faster. Um, two inch lens for best results, um, two passes for best results, unless you use my laser hack, which is a QR code here on how to use, how to do this process of powder coating in one pass. So if you wanna scan this QR code, you can kind of see how to clean powder coating and do it in one process. But if you don't want to do that and you wanna clean effect, what I'm gonna show you here on this video is running this large canteen uh, in uh, two passes just to show you the process. This also works for like your Yeti tumblers and stuff like that. So in essence, you're engraving through the powder coating or the, the plastic coating or painted coating on the surface of the metal uh, canteen in this case. Um, and then you are um, etching uh, so that it exposes the metal itself. And you can see here where the the second pass gives a much cleaner effect. It kind of takes that last layer off. This is because uh, energy of lasers reflected off the metal, so you'll never get a clean effect in one pass. Unless you use my laser hack where you use like a magic eraser and it really uh, speeds this process if you're running in production. But very popular application on canteens, on Yeti cooler, uh, like, like your tumblers. Um, very popular application for doing those, uh, for, for those applications for this marketplace. Here's another application. Um, duck calls is another popular one. Uh, simple little wooden designs, designs, but again, just like the gun stocks, you can do all kinds of cool stuff with it. Um, same type of process, laser wattage will determine time. I mean, in this case, you will want to use a rotary attachment if you want to, especially engrave all the way around, which is what I'm gonna show you right now. Two inch lens for best results. Uh, relief mode for the checkering grip patterns like you see here. Um, this one is pretty simple. I did use the three jaw chuck in this case to kind of hold on to the that small diameter and really make sure that it doesn't flip or slip. I used relief mode. And then the laser is able to run 360 degrees all the way around this. Um, we will measure the diameter of the object to make sure it's just right. And then that laser will engrave here. I actually slow it down here so you can actually see it come right to that 360 degree mark and then stop. And then we've got our finished result here. So we're able to put a grip pattern all the way around the checker or, or a checkered grip pattern all the way around the duck call, um, including a, a little duck image onto it. And so I've taken a standard inexpensive wooden component that you know you can pick up for just a few dollars online. And uh, now I've tripled its value by doing a quick uh, engraving into the surface of that wood all the way around it, really turning it from a, a you know off the shelf product into an heirloom. Okay, now we're gonna go into some fiber laser type applications. Fiber lasers are nice because uh, unlike CO2 lasers, where you know we kind of covered your organics and your plastics and your woods and uh, other materials, a fiber laser is got a wavelength that's 10 times shorter in frequency. And because of that, it tends to react to materials the CO2 will not react to. So having the ability to use a fiber laser, especially in the outdoor type market, when you're doing guns and knives and canteens and metal kind of products, the fiber laser is an ideal solution for a lot of materials. And so I pretty much say about 85% of materials out there on this planet will process in some way or another with a CO2 laser. 
where the remaining 12 to 15 percent, um, I say 12 to 15 percent because there are a few that even the fiber won't do that, will will be processed with the fiber. There are some overlapping materials that work with both, but the fiber laser kind of finishes out the majority of materials out there, especially the hardened materials like metals. Um, that's what newer fiber laser is the most suited for is marking directly into metal. So instead of just a, a surface coating or a fused mark like a CO2 laser, a fiber laser can mark into metal. Um, it will also mark some plastics in some cases, um, but it is um, uh, it is limited in that case. And so if you do want to do a lot of metal marking and some plastic marking, the fiber laser is ideal for this application. Um, and it will give you the ability to actually engrave into materials like metals where the CO2 laser will just be a surface mark on the metals or a fuse mark. Um, you can also do coating removal like we can with the CO2. That's one of those materials that's a cross. So the CO2 will remove coatings and a fiber laser will remove coating. The difference is a fiber laser will remove your coating as well as go into the metal where a CO2 laser will just remove the coating. So that is that is the definite benefit of that. And here's a good example of a couple of applications that will kind of work on both, uh, but the fiber laser going directly into the metal uh, gives you a deeper marker, uh, 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 sharper, crisper mark. So fiber laser for direct metal marking, 3.2 inch lens for best results. Um, and then it's going to be able to just mark directly into that metal. Um, in this case, if whether it was a piece of stainless steel or in this case, a piece of coated uh, aluminum, we're able to just mark directly into those metals um, and get that nice, rich, white fiber mark. Other applications and coated metals and types of metals, um, which we'll get into a little bit later. Um, the, the flatbed lasers is not going to be really suited for depth into metal. So this is more your decorative type marking of metal, stuff like this. Um, different applications, coated metals and stuff like that are ideal for it, um, where uh, if you want to actually put depth into metal, we're going to get into that in a little bit. Here's another example of a, an actual compass. You can see it's a nice bright white mark because I'm able to kind of punch into that metal itself, um, producing a nice high contrast mark directly into it. The other benefit is of like coated metals, a CO2 laser will give you the removal of the coating, where the fiber laser in this case will give you a much, much brighter white mark because we are penetrating through the coating directly into the metal itself. And that's why you're seeing such a bright white mark on an application like this. So it's a simple little compass, um, decorative type marking. Uh, as the, the video showed at the beginning, decorative tends to be the most lucrative for this type, these type, this type of market. Um, here's the third one that I did where I've taken a hardened anodized um, extension. This is basically an extension mount for a scope site for a gun. Again, a fiber mark onto the material itself etched directly into the metal itself all the way through. In this case, I'm, I'm putting measurement or positioning type uh, imagery onto the surface of it. And then of course you can etch like logos and graphics as well onto it as well. Um, for not, not just for, you know, decorative, but also for labeling and, and uh, identification. You know, it could be a serial number, it could be barcode, it could be a logo um, onto the surface of the actual stock or the uh, component. So this is where the fiber laser is ideal. It is going to give you the ability to mark directly into metal, um, as well as the ability to um, produce brighter white marks. Now, my favorite machine for this marketplace is the dual laser, um, because it's going to encompass, I would say, 98% of all materials on this planet. A flex laser gives you the ability of best of both worlds. Uh, flex laser system is both a CO2 laser and a fiber laser on one platform. Um, and that is the benefit. Um, the Trotec Flex machine provides you with the ability to do two laser sources activated alternatively in one job. Um, so without manually changing any laser tube or focus or anything like that, we can push start and engrave directly into an organic material like wood and then into a metal material like uh, with your fiber laser using CO2 and fiber all at the same time. Um, allows all CO2 applications, uh, plus the ability to anneal, mark, and metal engraving all on one platform with the benefit of a much larger field size than like Galvo system. 
The only limiting factor of a flex unit like this is again, like I said, a flatbed machine really isn't ideal for doing and, and will not produce the depth you need into metals. And so if you need depth, like you saw with um, the, the video that I showed you at the beginning, this is not the machine for you because it doesn't work the same way in how it delivers that fiber laser onto the metal. And I'll explain that later. So if you want to watch a video on the fiber laser and kind of see all about the machines of the different flex machines or the flex fiber CO2 machine, you can scan this QR code and um, it'll, it'll take you to an in-depth video that will show you the, the ins and outs of that machine. But I'm not going to get too much into that. If you are interested, please scan this QR code for more information. I am going to show you a couple different applications that are uniquely suited um, for this marketplace. And so what I've got here is I've got a axe blade and a handle, a dual source laser. I'm going to use the CO2 laser for the handle onto the wooden handle. Um, and then I'm going to use the fiber laser for the metal. Um, wattage, of course, will depend on determine the time on both the CO2 and the fiber. More power on the CO2 for this type of grip or uh, decorative patterns. Uh, the faster it's going to process. And the ho same holds true for fiber lasers. You go up in wattage, um, you are you have the ability to actually process uh, at a faster rate of speeds. I'm going to use two colors in the graphic for the driver in this case. So what I will do is I will use one color on the screen, and I'll show you on the next application the actual design file so you can see this as well. So what I've done is I have the, the CO2 being run into the wood right now. And the CO2 is etching directly into the handle to kind of create that incredible high contrast decorative mark. And then the fiber laser, laser immediately moves to the second color in this case. And we're able to mark directly into the metal in this case. Um, there is a small amount of coating on here and we kind of fade from actual raw metal into a coating on the metal. So you do see some contrast differences and also there's a big deviation of focus. And so there are some variations on this hypographic but it really did come out still stunning looking by doing that. Um, and so there are going to be limitations. A fiber laser doesn't handle deviation of focus very well, um, less, less so than the CO2 laser. But in this case, trying to keep the blade as flat as I could, but it was a, there was a, like a big bump kind of right there at the top there on the metal side. So you kind of see a little of a bluish effect, but it really still produced a beautiful finished looking example. Uh, all with one click of a button, engraving with the CO2 on the handle, and then immediately switching over to a fiber laser onto the metal blade. Here's another example with a much flatter solution. As you can see, I get a more consistent mark in this case. Same process, same setup, and I'm going to show you the actual graphic design in this case. Two different colors. Um, we'll use what's called the 2.85 dual source flex laser lens. Um, that lens supports both CO2 and fiber in one process. Um, and so in this case, you can see the black is going to be run with the uh, CO2 and the blue is going to be one of the fiber. Um, I have assigned the blue to be engraved first. So you can see here the fiber laser is etching directly into the blade. Um, and then once I wipe all that residue off, um, you're going to get that contrast. Then the CO2 then goes on to engrave the handle in this case producing the effect. The other benefit is as we switch wavelengths from CO2 to fiber, not only does the wavelength switch, but we also assign a focus point. And so we basically manually focus onto the, the, the blade in this case and onto the handle. And then we assign a different focus point for both the blade and the handle. So not only is the laser power speed changing, but it's refocusing to handle the other uh, the, the height difference in this case. And then once it's wiped off and you got good contrast and good lighting, you get a much darker finished result. Um, this was just wiped afterwards um, with a damp cloth and washed off um, so you can get that finished. And in this case, I mirrored the graphic and then etched the handle on the other side as well. Typically, I only do the graphic or the, the blade on one side, um, but you can mirror your graphic and then send your handle cut engraving to do the both sides as well. And then last one is taking it a step further. And uh, not only are we engraving with this uh, CO2 onto the wooden handle, but we're also going to use the checkering three-dimensional relief mode grip pattern into the handle. Um, combined with the fiber laser with a, a scrimshaw type imagery into the blade itself. So here's a case where I've taken a hunting knife using the dual source CO2 
flex uh, 2.85 uh, CO2 fiber laser lens using two different colors, and then we'll etch that graphic. And so same gradient graphic using relief mode uh, in kind of black gray. Um, in this case, the fiber laser will engrave onto the blade. And the blade is of course gonna give us um, the contrast direct mark into the blade itself with the fiber laser. And then the CO2 laser is going to of course etch the, the black. Um, or I'm sorry, the, the, the black color, which is the, the, the grit pattern in this case. So by combination of both wavelengths onto one product, just a, a beautiful application uh, capability, and then also adding the gripping ability to use the checkering or 3D pattern uh, relief mode also onto that. Little, little scrubbing with some water, um, put it in a photo booth, and you get this finished result here. Okay, now we're going to move into the Galvo laser systems. These are uh, different types of laser systems. Typically, you can get these with both CO2 and fiber lasers. Um, we're going to discuss just the, the fiber laser aspect. Galvos are nice because they work a little different, um, and they are going to give us high speed marking instead of a flatbed laser where it delivers the beam through a, a set of flying optics, basically mirrors on little motors that move the mirror around across the field. Instead, two little uh, Galvo mirrors, basically motors that, that move the beam, and the beam is fixed above an object. And so it allows for a much, much faster marking. Um, your limiting factor is you got a smaller working area because of this. Um, however, we can actually move the marking head around and do larger fields as well, which I will show you. The benefit of this is that it is high speed metal marking as well as the ability to change direction and angle so that we can actually do depth metal marking. So that's where this, this type of Galvo type application is beneficial for this marketplace. So we have the ability to do the same thing as the fiber laser uh, on the flatbed machine with the additional ability to do a much quicker effect into annealing. Uh, we can also do laser coloring into certain metals and actually produce color into metal. So if you want the color red or green, we can use what's called a MOPA laser, which I'll get into in a second, which will actually produce color on certain metals. You can also produce depth into metals using uh, different heat effects, which we will go more into as well. Uh, Galvo fiber lasers come in all different sizes and shapes. Um, even though that uh, they do have a smaller marking area, we do have much larger ones because the marking area head has the ability to move around on a field. So I will show you an example on a large gun stock where you may be able to just do a small area, but when the head is able to move over an area and then do that small area and then move to a separate area, we have the ability to do much larger areas. Just not a continuous seamless graphic across the field like you saw with uh, the CO2 systems. So this is more for etching a logo in one area and then a graphic in another area and a logo or a QR code or barcode um, across the graphic. Um, so that's where this is uh, beneficial, but I'll, I'll illustrate. If you do want to use like color type applications, the MOPA is a, it's an additional type of fiber laser it's, or it's a different type. So it'll do everything the standard fiber laser will work, but it also has the ability to control uh, waveform um, and frequency of that waveform so that we can actually produce these types of colors. And so if you literally wanted to produce a multicolored annealed stainless steel gun stock, it is possible pending that you can keep that material consistent. Um, however, it is a very difficult application. Um, the MOPA is uh, limited in its ability in, it, it is, a, uh, what I should say is it's, a, it's more difficult to produce this process. Um, and it is advanced trait, but produces an extremely interesting effect in the fact that you can produce color. It also produces a much brighter white than your standard fiber laser. So if you etch into aluminum, for example, with a standard fiber laser, it looks white or kind of a grayish white, where you run it with a MOPA fiber laser, which is the special fiber, it's going to give you the ability to actually mark much brighter white. It also allows for dark marking onto aluminum, which I can't do with a standard fiber. So it'll do everything a standard fiber will do. Um, but a MOPA laser is kind of gives you one step further. It's kind of like a specialty, uh, give you special ability. However, more control is what it en ends up giving you. 
So here's an example. I I'm just took some bullet casings here, um, and, and you can see how fast this laser actually is. I'm able to take and do a very, very quick light etching onto some brass casings in this case, um, directly onto it. And so if you're doing type of production type marking, serialization, logos, um, you, you can very, very quickly do a, a mark onto the surface of them in high volume so that you can justify the actual cost of doing something like a, a bully casing in this case. Um, here, here's one where I'm running a little bit deeper. This, this one is time-lapsed because I'm, I'm running much darker. So if I do want a dark mark onto something like brass, um, this one's time-lapsed about 5x so that we get a much, much deeper kind of a darker mark. But we also have the ability to kind of do a dark onto there. Um, however, it is not as fast as the live view that you saw on the first one, where it just put the U.S. Army logo on it because it turns the, the brass kind of a whitish effect at high speeds. So you do have a lot of different abilities on this type of uh, this application. Again, smaller working area. But as you can see, when we, I was doing the U.S. Army, it's insanely fast. It's crazy how fast. It almost looks uh, magic, in my opinion, when, when, you, when you put it in there and you push the button and it just blitzes a little graphic onto your um, piece of metal. A flatbed system just cannot do that. Like I can say this the fiber laser, Galvo fiber lasers are about 10 times faster uh, on some application and materials. Now, the reason I show this, especially uh, kind of going towards the, the video we saw, saw with 2A Tactical and Dark Alliance at the beginning of this seminar, was the ability to mark depth into metal. Um, and this is something that is uniquely suited to a Galvo fiber laser. Um, this is an awesome capability because you want that high contrast mark. You want the ability to actually mark directly into the metal to produce long lasting de uh, depth into it. This is time consuming. It can be more time consuming. Um, some of these marks can take hours, uh, especially if you're doing large areas and large graphics, um, but really depends on wattage. Uh, we range in wattage, you know, from 20 watts up to 100 watts on fiber lasers. Uh, also different lenses. Different lenses can produce a, di a different effect or smaller beam diameter allows for more penetration into the material. If you scan this QR code, you can see this gear engraved from start to finish on designing the graphic all the way through finished results. Um, in, but now there are some things too, especially on the firearm industry with depth in the met metal is you want to really kind of understand. Um, here are some QR codes if you want to know the legalities on marking depth into something like a gun stock. The, uh, this is more so not for the decorative side, but more so for the um, serialization. And uh, uh, if you're creating or designing your own firearms, you need to make sure that you re uh, the requirements are up to spec because of the uh, the intricate tracking and traceability systems from the ATF. So if you want to scan, scan these QR codes or you can type in these links, um, the ATF.gov firearm guides, basically, um, as well as the handbook. You can scan this one on the bottom to really immerse yourself into the legalities and details require that are requirement in order to do uh, serialization and barcodings. I'm not going to get too much into this uh, because you, you want to make sure you understand that and make sure that you're you're legal when it comes to doing that type of stuff. Like I said, decorative is not as important. It's purely cosmetic in that point. Um, like uh, the Dark Alliance and the 2A Technical tend to do the depth into it more for decorative type stuff. And the depth is more cosmetic as well as uh, increases the perceived value of the graphic by going more depth. So here's an example of a, of a view, I, I took this one and engraved it with about 30 passes. And that's where the, the actual mark into the metal is beneficial. The benefit of a fiber laser is it can go multiple angles and multiple directions. And so I'm able to actually engrave across the graphic and then turn to 15 degrees and then do another another pass and then 15 degrees, another pass. And then each between each pass, the laser will do a cleanup to kind of take any residue off. But this allows for, in this case, it was a pretty extreme depth into the into the steel surface of this gun. Um, but we're able to get, a, in this case, I think I was about 20 thousandths of an inch depth, which you only need about three thousandths to make it legal. But this really showcases the ability to do that. Now, if you're doing large areas, the Galvo fiber lasers on the larger systems use a mechanism that allows the, the Galvo head to move around. And so this one's not actually going to mark, but it's going to showcase from the design software on our larger Galvo systems. Here's a full length gun stock. 
And this stock is just going to kind of show you our large Galvo systems. The head itself may not be able to engrave a large area, but on our large Galvo systems, we have the ability to move the head to different locations. And so the head can move over, mark on a specific part of the gun stock, and then move to a different location, mark on that. So if you're doing a serial number, a logo, um, identification, registration, you know, attack mark or tick mark or um, I, uh, warning capabilities, you can utilize a large format Galvo system to mark in different graphic and different locations, and it'll compensate for both the location, the X, the Y, and the Z or the focus point on that object. And so larger Galvo systems truly give you the ability to take something like a full length gun stock and mark on all the different metals in this case, all at one push of a button in an enclosed safe manner. Um, and so we didn't actually mark on this, but uh, this process is the same. Uh, I just wanted to show you this video to really showcase the ability to mark with a fiber laser as well as depth, all with an enclosed system. Um, and if this was all metal, you could, of course, go across different components or different locations across the entire product. If you did like some of the graphics that you saw today, um, you can scan this QR code or type in this link here. Um, I, of course, design all my graphics. I ordered all the materials. Um, within the files themselves, you can actually, there's a link to buy the materials itself. Uh, so there's a link to, if you want the, the, the cooler pad or the gun stock case or the knife handle, there's a link to actually do that inside the files. And so you can scan this QR code. I have provided them in both a PDF format and a Corel Draw format um, for all the different files you've seen on most of the seminar. I would say about 90% of all the different files you saw here today are available for you on our website. Should you like to download them, uh, run them yourself, modify them, edit them, um, you're free to do as you will with these type of files. Um, if you missed previous Third Thursday workshops and seminars, please feel please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We do this all the time. I have an entire series called Laser Hacks. It will really help you improve your processing capabilities. Um, plus, we have an entire line of these seminars already done, including glass engraving, textile processing, uh, laser marking methods, signage techniques and materials, wood processing and relief engraving, large format cutting and printing, um, Corel Draw Basics and Laser Compatibility, Laser Processing Plastics, as well as my Laser Hacks 1 and 2 seminars. So if you scan this QR code, it'll take you to all those seminars. If you subscribe to the Trotec USA YouTube channel, um, you will be kept up to date in all the different types of techniques, tr uh, trainings, techniques, and laser hacks that we have out there for you. Uh, our January deal of the month is 30% off a basic line on our Trotec materials. So if you scan this QR code um, and you can do the voucher code gen-promo-2021, hyphen um, it will give you 30% off of uh, the basic line of Trolace plastics. And so if you are looking to, to purchase some plastics this month, um, that is our current promotion for the this month of uh, uh, laser materials on our material uh, uh, supplier site. Um, on engraving-supplies.com, or you can, of course, scan this QR code. All right, we have finished the final seminar, and now I'm going to go ahead and go side to side with the awesome Andy Wellens. Our, uh, yeah. <laughs> Hello, Andy. How are you doing today? Very good. Good, good, good. <laughs> Andy is our, uh, uh, your uh, industrial or your, I'm the industrial application, sorry. You're the industrial sales manager for Trotec Laser, uh, especially on the Galvo side, working with gun stocks, metal marking and stuff like that. And so he's a wealth of uh, uh, expertise when it comes into especially some of those markets. And so I brought him on today to help explain some of the questions that we may have as we are uh, going through the questions today. So we're going to go ahead and bring the different questions up on the screen and uh, we'll answer them as we, um, uh, as the order they were received. Okay, let's go ahead and get going. Will the cooler pads work with a fiber laser? Oh, that's a great question. I think they actually will. 
Uh, because it is a polyurethane foam and polyurethane based compounds, I have had great success on the fiber lasers. Um, I don't think you will see as much depth, but I do think the contrast will be out there. Um, I would give it a try, but uh, I would give it a pretty high percentage choice of trying. Um, Andy, have you come across or tried that before? Uh, yeah, depending on the coating, you can get a color change or uh, even a contrast engraving on, on some of those coated uh, foams. Yeah. Yes. I, I've, I've had the same awesome. Yeah. Oh, good, good. Great question. All right. Next question. Is there a good way to determine what the cut angle is, particularly on a 2.35 flex lens? Uh, um, cut angle is going to depend, depend on a lot of different manners. So what kind of material, um, if you're cutting something like foam, uh, what kind of focus point, you're, how much you're focused into the material itself. Um, there's really no easy way. My suggestion is to give it a try and measure it, focus into it a little bit, but, um, uh, angle is really difficult to compensate for. Um, another way to do that is to kind of fo uh, engrave something, uh, a little dot, and then take it out of focus and then engrave a dot again and measure the difference. You can kind of see the angle of the beam. But there's no quick and easy way to measure it because there's too many variables. We have a 45 watt Speedy 100. Any way of getting the settings based on our wattage? Um, I guess it depends on what settings you're referring to, not knowing what your application you're referencing to. We can, of course, give you some different guidelines. Um, feel free to check with check back with us. But, uh, you know, settings are based on the material we're running. Not knowing what you're running, I couldn't tell you what settings, but we can definitely help you out, yes. Um, how deep did you go for the clip? Um, I guess I'm not sure what clip you're referring to. Yeah, Mandy, you, you sure? Yeah, you, I, uh, yeah, the I, decorative, the decorative engraving, I think. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. I, I guess I'm not. I'm not sure for the clip. Uh, what do you mean by uh, how deep did you go? Uh, Nick, if you could uh, repost kind of which one you're talking about, and we can we can definitely answer it uh, later. Can the duck calls be engraved with a 60 watt laser? Uh, absolutely. Um, wood engraving will work with any wattage. As I said, higher wattages are going to improve your productivity. Um, that's the only difference. Any wattage will work on wood. Um, it's just a matter, like I said, higher wattage equals higher productivity when it comes to etching onto wood. When using relief mode, um, is it for the entire graphic or just a 3D area? Um, Relief mode is, it can be used for any type of graphic. So if the graphic is already just black, the laser will assign full power and engrave it just like anything else. If you leave relief mode on and you have different shades of grayscale, it'll assign more or less power based on how dark or light that shade of gray is. So yes, you can leave it on. Um, you can use it for the entire graphic. Um, if you have other colors, the grayscale will be ignored and then you can use whatever power setting. So for example, if you're cutting with red, it will use in a different, uh, the different setting for that cutting mark. And so yes, you can definitely use relief mode for anything if you, if you like. Any illustrator instructions for creating the grip pattern rather than Corel? Uh, great question. I have not generated it since Corel is the more popular in the laser industry. I don't have any instructions currently done and I don't have plans to it, but uh, I do know the benefit of Illustrator 2 is since there's so much information out there, you can do a quick uh, Google search or, or a YouTube search for a video on that. All you want to do is the, the search for the process of how to do gradients uh, within Illustrator. Um, and there's a ton more information. And the reason I did one for Corel is because there wasn't one already there. So just do a quick YouTube search should you want uh, information on that. How are you getting the outlines of the items you are engraving? <laughs> well, um, that's a great question. Yeah, you kind of saw me make that gun outline. Uh, that's what I do for pretty much everything. So there are a, there is a lot of time to create the outlines for the duck calls and the knife handles. Um, I spend hours and hours designing those graphics, kind of the same process I did for 
cutting out the foam. I stick it on the scanner bed or I take a photo of it and then I trace around it and then I can you can measure the object and then you can scale it properly. Unfortunately, there's no library of graphics out there that you can just get a digital graphic for an outline of an object. Um, there does it does require a little bit of design time, unfortunately. Here's a good one for you, Andy. Is there any way to retrofit a MOPA onto a flex machine? Not at this time. It is definitely being discussed as an option. Uh, but as of now, with the speedy flex systems, uh, only the standard Galvo uh, fiber is, I'm sorry, the standard fiber is available. Uh, but again, in the future, we may have that as an option. Yeah, I, I, I do remember us saying that that is, uh, that is something that will be coming. So uh, stay tuned. The MOPA capabilities, some of those capabilities. Now, still, you won't be able to do the depth into the material, but um, it will give you maybe more ability to do, say, color, for example, onto metals, which is a, a unique trait of the uh, MOPA. The challenge with MOPA in the flatbed is focusing yeah. uh, the different method of delivering the beam to the surface. So uh, that, that is definitely something that we're working on to uh, optimize it before we make it available. Good question, though. Is it more economical to upgrade an existing Speedy 300 CO2 to Flex or just buy a new machine? I'll give this one to you, Andy. <laughs> I, I guess it depends on the value or, or that you give your machine or the age of the machine. Um, all systems can be upgraded to flex and uh, you know, the advantage to buying a whole new machine is you have a, a backup secondary machine, but I, I guess for specifics on that, you can uh, contact your, your local salesperson uh, and I'm sure they'll be happy to, to help with that on options for upgrading. I agree. Would you use relief mode for engraving photographs? Um, I do not recommend doing uh, photographs with relief mode. Photographs are pulsed into the image to create a actual photograph. If you used relief mode to do a photograph, unfortunately, you're not gonna get a 3D looking image from a photograph uh, because uh, it, it, they're not actually designed that way. So no, I do not suggest using a relief mode with, uh, with running the uh, photograph. Okay, Nick is back. All right. Sorry, I meant the foam in the gun case. When you cut out a pistol outline, I noticed the clip was not uh, uh, not laid flat. It was rotated 90 degrees. Did you use a different speed? Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Thanks. Thank you for uh, clarifying that, Nick. Um, yes, um, uh, when I cut out uh, the, the, the clip itself was rotated, um, I did use a different power and speed for that. Um, I, I had a piece of uh, like practice foam and what I had done is I actually kind of played with the different power setting to, to find a power setting that would produce the right depth for the clip. Um, and always have some practice material when doing this stuff. Uh, don't buy a case and expect you're going to do it the first one. Um, always have a little bit of practice foam in this case. And that's what I did in this case. I kind of dialed in the settings. I found the correct setting. And then I assigned a different color to each one of the operations. So in this case, it was, I believe, blue was the, was the clip. And then I assigned a power and speed that would produce enough depth to where it would lay down in there. Um, I didn't compensate for angle at all, just, just enough depth to where it's laid in there consistently is all I was going for. So that was it. I tried downloading the file for the CDEC, um, but I use version 17 and can open the file. Can you provide the file in older versions? Um, I do typically produce the versions in a much earlier version of CorelDRAW. If that version did not work, import the PDF. Um, so PDFs will directly import into CorelDRAW as a vector format. And a lot of people don't realize that. So if, the, if you have an older version of Corel and it doesn't open, um, download the PDF and then hit file, import, and then import the PDF directly into your version of CorelDRAW and that will work this time. Will the Rayjet 300 do relief with grayscale bitmap? Um, that is a great question. Andy, do you know that? Uh, I'm very sorry. I don't know the answer to that. 
Yeah, I, unfortunately, I, I, I've not had a lot of experience with the Rage at 300 because um, we don't really sell it. And it, it's been a, gone since I've been with Trotec. And so we'll have to get back to you on that. I'm not sure if that uh, if, uh, if the Rage at software that comes with the 300 does do the gradient uh, 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 relief mode. Um, I believe it has the capability to do it, but we need to double check that for you. What's the difference between relief mode and photograph mode? Okay, um, great question. Relief mode tells the laser system to vary the power based on different shades of grayscale. So as the grayscale goes darker, the power increases. As the grayscale goes lighter, so lighter shades of grayscale, the power decreases. Photograph mode basically optimizes the laser system so that it pulses a graphic pulse into the image itself. So it's like a, a dithering mode or photo or like a halftone mode where we're actually identifying where a pulse is going to go. So you would not use the relief mode when doing a photograph. They're two separate entities and used for two separate parallel applications. So photos for photo mode, uh, stick photo mode on, relief mode for your grayscales and graphics and um, uh, checkering patterns and stuff like I showed you. What flat scanner do you recommend? That is really up to your discretion. I, I like one, of course, it's a bit newer. Don't, don't grab one from your old archives. Um, it's just, it comes down to resolution. If you can scan something a little higher quality, it's gonna look better on your screen and be easier to outline. Um, you use a really old one, unfortunately, you tend to get you know bad quality imagery. So that's really, it comes down to, and also size. Uh, if you're doing something where you have to scan a lot of large areas, maybe you want a much larger scanner to be able to handle larger products. And so that, that's your limiting factor, higher resolutions for different detailed graphics, as well as the, the size of the objects that you want to use. Ah, in my shop, we use LA's awesome cleaner to clean our powder-coated drinkware. Uh, pick it up at your dollar store for a dollar, bottle refill. Oh, that's good to know. I didn't realize the dollar store sold it. Great, great tip, uh, uh, Jay Coulter. Um, I actually, if you go to my my laser hack where I do that, I, I kind of showcase that. I go to my laser hack. We I use the same LA's awesome cleaner, too. It is awesome, I have to say. New here. In Las Vegas, great info. I'd like to... I'd like you to go into detail. Great info, and I'd like the I like the way you go into detail. Oh, I appreciate it, Keith. Thank you so much. If I could read, <laughs> um, can you cut out the C deck material with a CO two laser? Absolutely, you can. No problem. You're very welcome, Peter. Thank you. All right. Well, I, that is it. Um, Andy, thank you so much for your expertise and joining me here today. Um, I want to thank everyone for joining me for my third Thursday. We'll be doing another one next month, third Thursday of February. So make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, join me next month. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone.